Let's head back to the lodge. And we have suspicious music, so obviously there's something fishy going on here. Thing is though, the broken window was at the rear, so obviously the front wouldn't look like it was broken into. So it doesn't look like there's anything wrong with the sign. Not really any evidence of struggles around here either. Time to just head straight into the lodge itself. Definitely evidence of, wow, yeah, really evidence of a struggle here. I guess his spear must have been snapped while we're fighting the other Jaeger. It's not like we really had um, the ability to pay attention to much else while that was going on. Well, I mean, the pretty obvious clue is this giant blood stain on the ground. Unfortunately, we don't really have any, um, any means of analysing the blood. Uh, yeah, Annalise is obviously not good with this kind of thing. But, I mean, if you're expecting a routine training exercises, I mean, who would be at this point? Great, the phone smashed, so we can't just call Cassie and have him solve all of our problems. And you might notice something else that's missing here. <laughs> well, that's a new low. Phyllis is gone. That's why I said to make sure that you do all of your purchasing earlier. Because you have no access to the shop for the rest of this entire chapter. Yeah, the prologue is kind of sadistic in that regard. You have a very, very small window of opportunity to do shopping. For healing items and ingredients for cookies. So, good thing we bought those when we did. So, the map's been ripped out. And, well, we know exactly why this window's broken. We were there when it happened. And that's everything. Yeah, no one of note was up in the second floor at the time the attack happened. I don't think there was anything really useful to them up there. So, yeah, it seems like they're trying to move to a new base. That was another bonus BP question, by the way. Even though there are no side quests in the prologue, all of your bonus BP from it comes from answering these questions correctly. Especially after they broke that window themselves. Huh, I wonder if there is somewhere on that map that looks like a place that can be defended easily. Well, at least someone made it out of this okay. Well, I mean, you're not exactly trained for combat, and there was a lot of that going on at the time, so there's not really much you could have done. If you stayed, you would have just got yourself killed.
And true, they could have gained one more hostage. The more of us that are around, the better. We're just getting to that, actually. Of course, the fortress. Because that's the one place in this chapter we haven't been yet. Oh, okay, so it's kind of like an, I don't know, an imitation of a military facility. It's kind of a cool idea, though. But now it looks like we're going to actually be saving it from a real hijacking. Yeah, I was about to say it's just kind of that classic RPG interface spoiler of if there's a place marked on the map, it's probably going to be important and you will end up going there at some point. But I just realized there are a couple of, like, off the top of my head, Final Fantasy XII has a few, like, major world map locations that you never need to go to for the main story. I think it's the Nebraeus Deadlands and the Necrol of Nabudis. I don't think you ever, like, outright need to go there. They're purely optional. <laughs> I love his reaction to that. Well, it's pretty smashed up. I don't know how you'd possibly be able to restart it. Good news is, though, you still get to tune your augments and synthesize more quartz. The bad news is that you can't buy items from Phyllis anymore. So, uh, yeah. If you're uh, low on healing items, in particular the revival items, yeah, you want to use those only when you absolutely need to because they're in very short supply for the entire prologue. And if you run out of those before getting to the end boss of this place, you're going to be in serious trouble. Now, before we leave the lodge, we want to go ahead and check out this room because here we found Gambler Jack, Volume 1. Gambler Jack is going to be our new book series for this game, the equivalent of Carnelia from the first one. Gambler Jack also has kind of a funny world building detail attached to it that uh, is going to be explained later on in the story, so I won't actually talk about it yet, but it's pretty funny. Uh, so, Gambler Jack. Gambler Jack. Yeah. So, Gambler Jack is attached to an achievement that I'm probably not going to get in this playthrough. Uh, oh, I, I can actually make another action one. I may as well do that right now. Because, not only do you have to find all of the... Uh, what do I get rid of here? Uh, all of these are really good. Um, I really want Earth Guard too. I think for now I'll actually swap in action one though. Just for a little bit of extra speed. So, not only do you need to get all of the Gambler Jack books, which are all in very hard to get locations and are often guide dang it, but you also have to fulfill a second condition that requires absurd amounts of pure luck. And I mean absurd luck. I will rant about that later. Because here we are at the aptly named Grimcell Fortress, our final destination for this game's prologue. Yeah, we're already storming a fortress. In this case, a training facility designed to mimic a fortress, but it's still basically a fortress. Several people, so I'm guessing all of the Jaegers along with the hostages. Thing is, all of the individual Jaegers were pretty much boss quality, so it only being three or four is still bad for us. I would normally agree with Estelle there, but we're going to be up against something very infamous very soon. Here we are, Grimsel Fortress. And we get to hear the amazing Laysan Fortress infiltration theme again. 
All right, okay, now those beetle-type enemies, they're actually very, very dangerous if you let them create to strike you, so I'm going to try and see if I can... There we go, good, okay. Uh, this is actually not a great setup. P Pain Beetle. Yes, uh, that's actually a pretty apt name. You also have the Crybaby, uh, which, as their description says, uh, yeah, they can throw stuff at you. They're actually surprisingly dangerous, too. Uh, I'm gonna actually go ahead and use Stone Hammer to try and take one of them out immediately. And these things don't like, again, they don't like fire or water. The reason why I want to fight the, um, the Beatles is because they can drop savory pinions, which are necessary for making cookies. Which, trust me, we're gonna want more of later. Okay, that wasn't as really dangerous as heck. I have been completely annihilated by these things in the past. And these things are worth a lot more experience, so we're probably gonna level up uh, at least once before we get to the boss of this place. Savory opinion, good. That's exactly what I wanted. We want to check this way first, because here we get EP1. As you close the chest, it gives you a sad look. It wishes that had something more for you too. And in here we get EP charge. You've looted this chest already. It's strange. It almost feels heavier now. Well, that's creepy. Let's get out of there. I should mention uh, that you should uh, get really struck by these things because that will kill you because they can do that. And that hurts quite a bit. What I was going to say is that, um, yeah, I'm actually leaving this fight now. Uh, in fact, now will be a good time to show this off. So there's no healing points uh, at the start of this place, but you can at any time go back to the Bold Star channel and use that healing point. So feel free to make use of that as much as you want. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's head to the real part of Grimsel Fortress. And let's preempt you. Uh, only one, though. Yeah, you want to have Earth Arts and at least one person fighting these things, because they really don't like Stone Hammer. And that's yet more Beast of Flesh, which is not that useful to us. They, they can drop Prickly Seeds, though, which is useful. Of course, I only have enough ingredients to make six. So, there's a big barrier in our way. Fortunately, though, there's a gate release switch right next to it. This fortress does not seem to be particularly well designed, but then again, it was meant for training exercises, so maybe putting the switch close to the gate does make sense from that kind of standpoint. It's one of the downsides of taking over a facility that's actually a training facility. Yeah, a really stupidly designed Laced Fortress that puts the switches to open the gates right next to the gates themselves. Well, that's helpful. Oh, I thought Estelle was gonna say, Oh, I'm surprised you said something so smart! Seems like Annalise was trained by Shera, so she was kind of the protege before Estelle was. Huh, who does that remind you of? Annalise is kind of like a slightly older version of Estelle in a few ways, although in many ways Annalise is even more out there than Estelle is. Yeah, no mentors, no, um... <laughs> Overpowered boyfriends who used to be assassins. Nope, we just have to rely on our own skills. So, let's keep going. Now, uh, there is going to be an ambush a little later in this place that can kind of kill you if you're, um, if, uh, you're not careful. Okay, so, this area gets a little more involved. Because if we go up here, we are blocked by a gate. I intentionally didn't flip that earlier switch because I want to show something. Tear bar. Not this, I'll be showing it later. You know the chest is empty, but it has served you well. Instead of opening it, you give it a gentle pat on the head. That's one of my favourites, I just really like that one. It's just, it's kind of weird to think it's possible to be heartwarming towards a chest, but it is. So if you try and flip this switch, 
It does absolutely nothing. But remember what we saw earlier? There was a switch that said power on. Or well, you know, it says power off at the moment. Okay, now that we've flipped that, this switch has power so it will work this time. So the puzzles are slowly getting a little more involved, but still nothing too insane. No, the real insane thing is the boss. I'm really, really not looking forward to that, if you can't tell. Speaking of things I'm not looking forward to, okay, not you. I think coming up soon is the ambush, and I, I remember the ambush well because um, I have died to it many times on earlier playthroughs because it's really, really bad. I do kind of like how that just makes you spin around in the air. Uh, but let's just finish you off. Yeah, a lot of the enemies here are extremely weak to arms and not much else. Which again makes Adelaide's kind of underpowered. And hey, we have our first level up. Okay, another savory pinion is good. No, I'd rather just use Tear for this one. In fact, let me just see, can we... we can make two more of these right now. Let's go ahead and do that. Don't worry, I will be showing exactly how useful these are later. Okay, yeah, this, this right here, this hallway, I'm pretty sure this hallway is the one the ambush is in. Let me just quickly check the bracer notebook, because I want to see something. Three Earth, two Space. Can I get Stone Impact on Estelle at this point? Uh, doesn't look like I have anything that gives enough Earth. I can get two Earth, but I can't get three Earth. It's a shame, because Stone Impact would be really useful coming up now, because this thing. Okay, it's actually not quite as bad as I remember it being. I thought it was like five Crybabies, but... This fight is still kind of dangerous, especially because they get the first strike on you. And I might immediately have to heal. You don't have anything Earth, so I may as well have you take out one of the beetles. Oh yeah, that lowers your defense as well, so... That can be really dangerous in combination with the beetles. Uh, you know what? I'm actually I'm not going to S-break. I'm going to go after both of the crybabies. Uh, I'm going to play it safe and heal. Oh yeah, that was very close. Okay, Annalise is still in there, just barely. I don't know if that beetle can get all the way to her. I guess we'll find out. I'm still just a little torn about whether the S craft with the stealth gets. Okay, right, that's fine. Could get to Annalise. The question is, when can I get? No, that's not good. Okay, yeah, I am going to go for, in fact. I'm gonna go morale and then double S break. Which should be enough to finish this. Actually, wait, no, these things have quite a lot of HP. Yeah, that's not enough. So in that case, I'm gonna aim on. Uh, aim on. Better to have one goal than to have them both running around. Unless this guy double turns us. And it didn't do anything then, okay. Just for safety. No, I'm not getting stone hammer any time. Yeah, see, I still I still really like this song. It's, it just gets you really pumped to turn things around. It always makes it worth it staying on low HP. Especially this part of the song. Oh, that was exactly who I didn't want you to hit. But she barely survived, nice. 
And that's done. And two more savory pinions, that means two more cookies. Which I will bake right now. And now I'm gonna go back to the Ball Star Channel and heal. In fact, let me just quickly check what's- yeah, this is- this is the stairs to the next floor, so let's go back and heal. Analyze levels off. And because I accidentally ran into that enemy, I'm gonna have to go back and heal again. Okay, so back here, it's time for the second floor. And I'm starting things with a long hallway. I may as well fight you. One more savory opinion, which means. Got a few more at least, so I can make two more. And that's everything. I think I can make quite a few Nature's Bounty as well. That'll probably be more of an emergency fallback. Actually, though, I, I may as well get out of the way cooking at least one of them, because I need to do that for the achievement. And I may as well cook one of these too. So, in here, we are in complete and total darkness. There are also enemies running around here. So, you do have to be very, very careful. In that chest is something that will help us, but I want to see I want to just quickly show what happens if you run into an enemy in these conditions, because it's actually kind of interesting. I want to know this. There we go. So, uh, we are automatically inflicted with blind status, can't see anything, and our only option is run. So, obviously we need to do something about this darkness. And, like I said, in here is the solution. Night Goggles. There's this great story I want to estelle you some... Ah, puns. Anyway, so what the Night Goggles do is you equip them on one character. We only have one pair of them. And with these on, we have night vision in this area, so we can actually see. Also, it's going to prevent us from... Uh, as you can see here, Estella's automatically inflicted with blind, but Annalise is not, because she has the night goggles on. Except, uh, we took quite a bit of damage there. Except a good Fireball EX should sort this out. Yeah, see, I deliberately gave Estelle, who's my main arts user, the, uh, I deliberately made sure she wasn't the one who held the night goggles, because her being blind doesn't matter, because arts always hits. S-Crafts also always hit, so they're another good thing to do for blind. Yeah, well, afflicted with blind status. I'm not sure why there are these weird, like, rainbow clouds that follow you while you're in this state. I think that's a bug in the Direct X9 version. But anyway, with the night vision goggles, we can now actually navigate this area. And it's actually a pretty big one. And I think there's at least one more chest, uh, at least in an offshoot room at this place, so... Yeah, there's a little bit around there with an enemy in it that we haven't actually been to. Yeah, through this side, we can go through here and get ourselves an EP charge. You can save the world, but you can't remember whether you've looted a chest once or not? Hey, we're far from saving the world in this game. Okay, that should be everything, so I'll see you at the exit to this room. Here we are. This looks suspiciously like a potential ambush hallway. I forget if there's more than one, but just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, heal up here.
and use an EP charge with a still. Okay, no ambush. That's good. Now let's head up these stairs. Here we are on the third floor. I'm always paranoid in those hallways. And I technically don't need to equip the night goggles anymore, but there's not really that much better that I have at this point. And one more chest. And yes, we get an ID unit. This one's actually required. And I believe it's the last chest in the base, too. You might have also noticed that there was an, a special icon for that item. This is a new type of item that is introduced in SC. So yeah, these are usable event items. You have to, well, use them directly from the items tab in the menu. Before we go though, we need to check out what this chest for it is. This is the 56th chest you've opened. Congrats! Nah, just kidding. I'm not even counting. Well, I am counting, and it's actually chest number 28. Exactly half the number that chest quote said. That's oddly specific. One more of these things. Actually, several more of these things. The rest of this place is pretty straightforward, and like I said, I'm pretty sure that was the last chest in this place, so we don't need to worry about checking every area. Yeah, I might want to try and build up my CP as much as possible before the end of this place. Yeah, I keep hyping up that boss, but trust me, uh, yeah, believe the hype. And yeah, see this thing, it says gate close on it, and this door is locked. Well, no obvious lever, and we just found an item earlier. That should be what opens it. So yeah, that. This is basically just a tutorial on these kind of usable event items and how they work. There's going to be quite a few more of these that we'll be using over the course of the game. And well, it's really our only option at this point. And yeah, blah blah blah, tutorial blah. Okay, so here's where we use that ID unit. Well, that's pretty cool. Brazy Guild must have had a lot of budget when they were designing this place. I still... Uh, that expression always just creeps me out because it imagine, makes me imagine that literally. So through here, we have... The Orbmet Charging Station. That can only mean one thing. We are about to face one of the most infamous bosses in this entire game and in the entire Trails series. The SC Prologue End Boss.